Good evening, everyone. It is April 20th, Wednesday evening. We have a couple of storm systems that are in the process of developing. One real main one that's going to be impacting the upper Midwest and the upper plains for this weekend. Actually, it's going to be impacting a much larger area than that. But for many locations, it's going to be bringing in really warm air. Lansing, Michigan will be getting warm perhaps for the first time this year. Actually, temperatures may even get warm enough. It's going, it's going to feel like summer for them. Temperatures going probably maybe even 80 degrees for this weekend, probably Shabbos and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday, temperatures upper 70s to near 80 degrees. That's summer-like temperatures for them. You know, in the olden days, a forecast just consisted of today will be sunny and cold. Or tomorrow will be warm. There wasn't much emphasis given to the thermometer or the temperature a lot of times. And today, a lot of times when you hear a forecast, especially like from the National Weather Service for certain cities, all you really hear is the temperature unless there's something historical going on or unless it really is intense. But this weekend, this is when describing the situation is really important for temperatures. The situation that's happening this Friday for many locations in the Midwest, like Missouri, especially places in Iowa and Minnesota when you go into Shabbos, and because temperatures in many locations might only be in the 70s, but the point is it's going to feel like summer. You know, when temperatures go into the 70s in August in places like Missouri, it doesn't feel like summer. It feels like fall. It has to do with the dew point. You know, some of the forecasts are going out of their way to say it will be warm and humid. In St. Louis, Missouri, warm and humid conditions are expected. Temperatures going into the low to mid 80s. Dew points aren't going to be like July type dew points, but pretty close to it. Dew points will be going into the lower, maybe even mid 60s. Dew points slightly lower for Shabbos. Maybe not even 60 for Shabbos, but those dew points, those really high dew points are making it really far north. And these are locations that may not have experienced any type of summer feel whatsoever this year. So it's going to really feel amazing for these places up in Michigan, Minnesota, northwest Wisconsin. Dew points going into the 60s for Shabbos afternoon. Temperatures, maybe only 70s. Maybe the temperatures will be in the 60s too. But regardless of what those temperatures are, it's going to feel like summer. There's going to be a summer feel in the air in places even in northern Minnesota and northwest Wisconsin. I don't think it's going to be for the entire northern Minnesota, but for many parts of northern Minnesota, northwest Wisconsin, it's going to feel like summer much different than what was happening today. Today, a storm system was bringing heavy snow, heavy precipitation rates, and when the precipitation rates are heavy, temperatures are that cold. When they are that cold and the precipitation is heavy, the precipitation falls as snow and it accumulated. Surface temperatures were above 32. You know, in North Dakota also, they are saying surface temperatures remain above 32. I don't know what that means. What does that mean? There's a very deep snowpack in that area. Surface temperatures remain above 32 as of yesterday. Maybe things have changed by now. You know, they saw there were places over there that saw, I said eight inches uh, earlier this week. I actually saw there were places that saw a foot of snow in North Dakota this week. And they got three feet of snow last week in some locations. Uh, I don't know the correct pronunciation of the town, and that's why I haven't been saying it. I think it's M-A-T-I-N, something like that. There was uh, the National Weather Service says that it was a valid report of 36 inches, but it was not taken at the official reporting station. At the official reporting station, it was only 20 inches, and therefore there was no record broken in that area. But going back to Minnesota and Wisconsin, we have snow that was falling today. Some areas three to six inches. By this afternoon, there was already five inches on the ground by about 2.45 p.m., five inches on the ground, especially in the Arrowhead area of Minnesota, where temperatures were closer to 32. They might have even been under 32. There was concern last night that the precipitation will be changing over to rain, possibly, even though the temperatures are under 32. Only because of solar insulation. This is a big chiddush. This is a, this is a big shocker. This is a, because of the solar insulation. The solar insulation is so strong this time of the year. That means the strength of the sun, the high sun angle. Even though it's cloudy and even though it's precipitating, 
still it's there's enough solar insulation to change the precipitation over to rain therefore the precipitation would remain as snow only if the precipitation rates are heavy in which case there's something called dynamic cooling and that's what cools things off you know already by february we go back to february solar insulation starts to make it into these weather forecasts here in the united states by february i don't really hear much about it at all in december and january i've heard nothing about it in december in January. You could issue ice storm warnings, winter storm warnings, heavy snow warnings. The amount of ice accumulation on the streets during a freezing rainstorm, during a freezing rainstorm in January, you know, you don't hear much about the solar insulation. The National Weather Service does say somewhere on their website that the freezing rain doesn't start to accumulate on the roads until the temperature is 28 degrees or lower. Now, I don't know if that's referring to day and night uh, or if that's only referring to the day or is that only referring to February onward. February is the first month of the year that I have heard – Meteorologists and experts say that the February sun, the angle of the sun, which is the same thing as saying the strength of the sun, the angle of the sun is high enough that the freezing rain will not accumulate on the roads during the day. I would assume that means unless temperatures are extremely cold. But maybe that 28 degree rule applies for February. March, that's even more so. But by April, there's so much solar insulation that the even snow, even the snow falling from the air, according to the Duluth National Weather Service yesterday in the forecast discussion, the precipitation could change over to rain. That was something that I've never heard of before. So to me, that was a tremendous thing to read about it. And uh, but we have something called dynamic cooling, which if the precipitation rates remain strong, heavy enough, the precipitation remains as snow. So you have temperatures were above 32 during much of the storm up there. I don't think they got the 6 to 10 inches. I don't think they did. But they got – it would have been if it wasn't for all the melting that's been going on. Nonetheless, it, there still was a winter storm warning in effect until this evening as far as I know. Now, now, that storm system had not only moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, but it also had Pacific moisture. So you had the combination of the two. That's something that sometimes happens in the upper Midwest. It sometimes happens even over here in the southern Midwest well, or the Great Lakes area. It sometimes happens. You get Pacific moisture as well and moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. You get added moisture. You get lots of snow from that. This weekend... I don't know about the Pacific moisture, but there's tons, there's tons of moisture coming up from the Gulf of Mexico. As we've said, we have dew points in the 60s. We have temperatures going into the 90s. I want to point out that there's a city in South Dakota, not just one city, many cities. I think Todd County, Todd County will be seeing afternoon highs on on Friday between 85 and 90 degrees. There's a city very close to there where the ICON computer model, I-C-O-N, is forecasting temperatures to hit 90 at 7 o'clock p.m. on Friday. This is a city in South Dakota. Now, in general, the forecasters are saying mid and upper 80s for the South Dakota area. South Dakota, Nebraska, places, there's places going into the lower and mid 90s. North Plate, Nebraska, highs in the low 90s. That would tie the previous record, perhaps even break it. The previous record high still remains the record high for Friday is 92 degrees. The question is, will that be beaten this Friday? Will temperatures hit 93, 91, 92? How hot is it going to be in North Plate, Nebraska? In those areas, generally, there is very little humidity. The sun is very efficient at heating things up when there is no water vapor in the air, when there's very little water vapor in the air. At the same time, there's extreme fire dangers for those areas. Winds are really strong. It's next to a powerful storm system, and the heat is tremendous Despite the fact it's right in the center of the low pressure system, one would think that there would be clouds there preventing such unusual heat. But, you, you know, heat also generates low pressure because heat rises. And, you know, on Friday, you see an example of that, at least in the beginning stages of that. It's kind of strange to see that over here in the plains, the desert southwest, you get that all the time through the summertime. If you ever look at a weather map in the summertime, it's very common to see 
an L, the letter L, always by the desert southwest. It just doesn't move. And I don't really know what to make of it. I don't know if anyone really knows what to, it's just the barometric pressure is low. It's that one's not associated with any storm system. It's just so hot there. The air rises and the air is light. And when the air is light, you have lower pressure. That type of low pressure isn't really associated with any type of a storm system or anything. It doesn't have much significance to it as far as I know. All the other low pressure systems do. On Friday, you look at the weather map, it kind of resembles that at least Initially, for certain counties, it resembles that. But for most of the upper Midwest and the upper plains, they will be in the midst of a significant storm. I don't know why it would resemble that in any county in Nebraska, why it would be getting so hot right when they're in the center of the low pressure system. I I don't really get it right now. But that's what the European computer model shows. As we go through the day Friday, Friday night, Shabbos, Sunday, a snowstorm will be developing in the western parts, the western part of North Dakota, in the northern part of North Dakota, the western part of the northern part of North Dakota. Bismarck, North Dakota might get something towards the end. They might get something. They also might get something maybe Thursday night or Friday morning. But a lot of it's going to be falling as rain and temperatures might even get into the 60s over there. We might even see some temperatures at 70 in the southern parts of North Dakota. That's possible. But in South Dakota, here's something really amazing. And we had something like this that happened last week. We have So again, we have those forecast highs on Friday going into the upper 80s. And when you, you know, there's a good possibility you might have a county that would hit 90, just one county, just enough to make a friendly media headline, a media friendly headline, because the temperature would hit 90 in some county. But generally, it would be in the 80s. This is for far southern South Dakota. At the same time, we have blizzard like conditions that will likely be setting itself up in the Black Hills area that's west of Rapid City, South Dakota. There might even be snow in Rapid City, South Dakota. You know, the National Weather Service is indicating there might be over a foot of snow, but in the Black Hill area, that's already really in southwest South South Dakota, that's, you know, that's where the Black Hill area is. And it's pretty interesting that you have these upslope winds that cause the updraft. It increases the updraft. The air is forced to rise by the mountain, and that enhances the precipitation. And a lot of times recently I've noticed that actually it's not just that it enhances the precipitation. It is the source for the precipitation. You have clouds all over the place, but it's not precipitating anywhere except by the Black Hills. That's something that you see over there and you see that it takes more than just a cloud to get the precipitation going. United Arab Emirates is doing something really interesting. They're sending electric domes into the clouds. Last summer, they were doing that. And in a certain way, that might be the safest way to go because you're not putting any chemicals into the upper atmosphere. There still is a debate whether this stuff works or not. No one really knows for sure. It seems like it enhances precipitation rates. Does it actually get them started? I don't know. Does it for real enhance it? Could, does it produce clouds? As far as I know, they're not able to produce clouds. So you need the clouds already there. You might even need some precipitation already there, but it seems to enhance it. They did get flooding when the United Arab Emirates did it last summer. And they were doing it not because of any drought. It was just so brutally hot. They wanted to cool things off and... You know, it's from 120 to 110, something like that. We go into this weekend, we have temperatures going into the 80s again for St. Louis for Friday and Chavez. We have temperatures are going to be real warm for much of the southern Midwest and then up into the northern Midwest for Chavez. Temperatures go into the 70s for Minneapolis, Minnesota. We have those high dew points, even locations that don't get into the 70s. It's still going to feel warm on Chavez. Major thunderstorms with tornadoes may happen for parts of the Midwest. Southeast, South Dakota as well, may see some tornadoes. Friday night, Shabbos night, I'm not sure if it's Friday night or Saturday night. St. Louis would be getting a strong thunderstorm, maybe severe, maybe even a tornado for Saturday night. In Rapid City, South Dakota, damaging winds headed for that area. Some snow, but the reason for the power outage potential, Motei Shabbos and Sunday, is because of those damaging winds, which will be associated with the departing storm system. Something interesting that I recently read is that the number of tornadoes is going down for the plains. 
ever since 1979, there has been fewer and fewer tornadoes in the plains. There is a debate as to whether this is connected to climate change. This would be something good for in regards to climate change. You know, back in COVID, the three-month lockdown, there were only two tornadoes in the plains. However, there's been an increase in tornadoes for places east of the Mississippi River, with the exception of Florida. So the significance of that, I don't know. You have the tornadoes going down for the plains, but it's increasing for places further east. We have coastal flood advisories in effect for New Orleans, Louisiana for tonight, perhaps even tomorrow as well. Some of the parks, parking lots, some of the roads by the coast may become completely flooded. This will be happening around the tides. I think the people that could be most excited about the upcoming forecasts are probably those that live in Lansing, Michigan, who will be experiencing for the very first time this year summer-like weather. And I don't know if we can say that about other cities because other cities actually get warmer than 80 degrees in the summer, warmer than 79 degrees in the summer. St. Louis, you can't really say it's summer. Well, in a certain way, you could. The normal high temperature for June in St. Louis is 83 degrees. National Weather Service uh, considers June to be a summer month in St. Louis, and temperatures will probably be around 83 on Friday. When you go into Nebraska and your temperatures go into the low 90s, that's really summer weather. I would imagine that is coming with low humidity. So we have a severe weather threat that's going to take place from now all the way through Chavez for the plains. We have a winter storm watch in effect for places in North Dakota, Montana, South Dakota as well, possibly parts of Wyoming. And we have an ongoing winter storm event taking place for parts of Wisconsin and Minnesota. Maybe it's moved on to Michigan by now. I want to point out that this low pressure system that's going to be deepening rapidly on Friday, the European computer model on the windy.com app, whatever version of the European computer model that is, it shows a storm system deepening under 29.0. It's going down to 28.9, something like that, or 28.98. So it really looks like a strengthening storm. And when it hits the Dakotas, it just starts to go north, completely north. And then when it hits the international border, it then resumes, it weakens, and then it starts to move northeast again. It would seem to indicate that Bismarck is actually too far to the east on this one and would actually end up in the warm sector, you would have to really get into the western part of North Dakota to get that snow, northwest parts of South Dakota as well, and the Black Hill area as well. Thank you for listening. I wish everyone a wonderful night. Those of us who are celebrating Passover, have a